host, Big Nick. Um, we have a very exciting interview that we've all been looking forward to. Uh, two incoming freshmen at the University of Michigan. We have Gage Garcia, running back, and Dan Bellari, quarterback. So we're going to talk to them about just their expectations for the season, and they're going to walk us through a week as a Wolverine and good stuff like that. So I hope you guys enjoy, and we'll get going now. So what's up, guys? You want to introduce yourselves? How's it going? Um, I'm Dan, quarter, incoming freshman quarterback. Yeah, I'm Gage, uh, incoming freshman running back. All right, and you guys are roommates, right? You guys, uh, did you guys know each other yeah. before the recruiting process, or no, not no, at all, right? Not at all, no. Yeah, I hear you. All right, so pretty much, uh, uh, I know it's new for you guys. You guys are just getting rolling as freshmen. But what's the message to the new guys in, the, in that locker room over there from Coach Harbaugh? Um, it's just, I mean. The main message from Coach Harbaugh is, like, just the team. Like, everything's about the team. He always says the team, the team, the team. So, it's very, like, <clears throat> very self selfless locker room. Um, and just hard work is really the message. Yeah, I hear you. And it's uh, it's got to be a weird circumstance right now with everything going on, right? I mean, what is he um... – is are you guys preparing to play with fans without fans what what does he think is the is what's going on right now i know you guys got rid of in the big 10 there's no out of conference games correct yeah it's all big 10 conference now yeah 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 as uh what, so are you guys prepared do you think there's definitely going to be no fans or what is coach saying i think the rumor is like about 20% of the big house Okay. But like, as you know, like it can go in an hour and change to no fans or, you know what I mean? So, yeah, we really I mean, don't, I don't know, right? Yeah, I don't think he's too concerned about whether we have uh, 100,000 fans or if we have zero. I think he's just kind of focused in on us getting ready for the season. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I know you guys don't look too much into this as players, but from someone on the outside looking in, um, Maybe, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, but I think this might be a good year in some sense for Michigan football, maybe without fans. Because when I look at your schedule, there are tough games where you would have had to, for example, go to Ohio State. And, you know, I know a big thing around there, around Ann Arbor, is overtaking Ohio State and becoming that dominant team again in the Big Ten. And what do you guys feel you have to do? as the new guys to really make that happen. Are you guys prepared and ready to do that? I mean, did you want to take this one? <laughs> well, uh, I think as incoming freshmen, our role is to get adjusted to, for our case, the offense, uh, you know, get bigger, get faster, get stronger, uh, get better overall as a football player. So I think our role in saying do it, do we want to be on top? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't know if it's our role to say how we're going to yeah. do that or anything like that. So I think we're we're kind of, you know, just taking it. You know, we're the new guys now. We're going to try to, you know, yeah. work work hard to, you know, show that we're going to be able to play football at a high level and earn our respect that way. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know. We're not really thinking <laughs> about that right now. Just working on bettering ourselves and – yeah, definitely. And that, that's a good answer because what I was going to say is obviously for people like myself, when we turn on TV and we read into Michigan football, the first thing we always see is the comparison mm -hmm. and, you know, the rivalry of Michigan and Ohio State. And everyone wants to know which team is going to be dominant and which team is going to come out on top. And that's a good answer, though, that you guys, you're not focused on that. You know, it's it's far ways away. And I think Michigan has a lot going for them right now. I think I think they had a very good squad last season who at times underperformed, but at times showed what they can do. And I think it's going to be an exciting year for sure. But um, I, I guess just take us through – again, I know it's new, but take us through a week as a Wolverine. When you guys got there and you guys got settled, is it is it completely – are you shocked or is it overwhelming? How is it going? Uh, so we start out 
we're in the morning session, Dan and I are. So we go in at eight o'clock or we're usually there pretty early. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually there around seven twenty. Uh, we go in, we go to the, um, our uh, cubby hole where we get our clothes. We all have to wear the same clothes. They all have to be blue from head to toe. Uh, wow. We're current, we're currently wearing uh, hats as well. Like the hat Dan has on to at all times. Yeah, to, yeah. Yep. To wow, it's like you're pledging a fraternity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and then we, we uh, rotate whether we're going to do the strength. Well, we're doing strength and conditioning right as of now. So one day we'll do uh, the conditioning workout. The next day we'll do stuff in the weight room. Uh, okay. It's a very uh, high pace workout. You know, you're always running from, uh, from each lift and after that then for dan and i we both have study hall mm -hmm. so we from 10 30 to one o'clock we're with our advisor and our advisor's kind of us you know telling us what do you have to do for the week and kind of supervising us to make sure that we're getting our stuff done yeah uh from there uh on monday and wednesdays we have class from one to three so right after study hall we have class and then on Mondays and Wednesdays, we have uh, four to five o'clock walkthroughs. So that's like routes on air and walkthroughs as well. So you're just kind of getting a feel for the place and everything. But yeah, it's player sure. but, uh And then there's a mix of other meetings. And, uh, you know, Dan has quarterback meetings. I have running back meetings. Uh, we have offensive meetings. So you okay. got to be ready yeah. at all times. So, yeah. And, yeah. um, is there – are you guys open to – in other words, of course you're open to doing whatever's best for the team, but are those positions set in stone or have they looked at you guys in other spots yet? Or how, how's, that, how's that going when you're an incoming player and they may feel that they could use you at another position? Has that, has that been the case for yourselves or any guys that you're close with? Um, not the case for us right now. Our position's set in stone, like as of right now. But, okay. Um, I'm sure Gage is probably, you know, getting looked at for special teams like early. Yeah. Okay. But, yeah. 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 That's, that's good. That's good stuff. So yeah. we'll stay on Gage for a second. Uh, two sport athlete <clears throat> and, you know, playing two sports at that level, we see a lot of guys play football and baseball or something along those lines, but to play two contact sports, <clears throat> you're on a scholarship for wrestling. I read as well. Correct. So it's year one is wrestling. Okay. And then the rest are football. Okay. So then how, and again, we see a lot of guys. So I guess my question is you have to balance it to, for the most part, the best you can 50, 50, but there's always going to be a focus and wrestling. I compare a lot to lacrosse in a sense of what's the next level after college. You know, we see a lot of guys, wrestle in college, play lacrosse in college. But when you're a football player at Michigan, we'd be crazy to ignore the fact that you're at the top, you know, like you've made it that far. And there is a next level that I'm sure you both dream about going to. And so how do you balance the fact of putting football first? Because I'm assuming you do have that dream of going pro and, you know, being on the biggest stage and also balancing getting your body ready and getting your mindset ready for the wrestling season. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, yeah, I haven't even figured that out yet. Uh, you know, uh, I'm new to this. Uh, yeah. I've wrestled and played football my whole life, but it was at the high school level. Uh, of course. You know, yeah. Playing football and wrestling in the big 10 is a whole different beast. In exactly. Itself. Yeah. So, it's not even like division three or two or even a low division one. You're, you're in the big 10. So, yeah. So that, that's a, that's a beast in itself. Like I said, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure how it's going to exactly work. Uh, I'm not sure what all the odds and ends are going to be, but, uh, you know, I'm just kind of taking it day by day, uh, going to complete the football season and then, you know, shift over into wrestling and see how it goes. Um, uh, I'm sure it's going to be hard, uh, you know, getting into that wrestling shape after football season. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just a whole different type of shape. Um, yeah. Can't really get in wrestling shape without wrestling. So, you know, that's going to be a task I'm going to have to, you know, try to do because 
uh, uh, during football season, I don't know how much wrestling I'm going to be able to be doing. Yeah, you know, of course. Be focusing on football. So um, it's all going to be about being able to adjust quickly. Yeah. And you don't have to go too much into detail, but did the coaches, when they, when you were being recruited and along those lines, did they try to sway you off of one or the other sport? Uh, for example, did your football coaches try to sway you off of wrestling or vice versa? Uh, so it was funny that the whole thing, uh, like the football coaches thought I was wrestling, the wrestling coaches thought I was playing football. So it was oh, like so one they of those. Didn't think, they thought the opposite. Yeah. Are you just referring to the Michigan coaches in general or just every like I'm saying yeah, for the when you committed to Michigan. Oh, at, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually went for a a camp. Okay. Uh, and they offered me for football and then Harbaugh threw in the idea of wrestling as well. And oh, he did. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that that's was, interesting. Okay. That was, yeah, that was all on him. I was just gonna be gonna play football. And he threw the idea out there, and I said, you know, why not? Uh, wow, so I'm, Harbaugh wasn't trying to sway you off of wrestling. He put the idea in your head. Who wrestle? yeah. Wow, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, now, so, do you mind me asking what uh, what weight you wrestle? Uh, as of now, I'll be 197. Okay. And does that interfere with the body you're trying to be prepared for for this football season? It could. Uh, I'm not concerned about maintaining the 197 pound weight. Of course, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna try to get, you know, as big as I can, but as comfortable as I can for football. Sure. And, uh, you know, go from there. Uh, if I need the bulk up to be a light heavyweight, then that's the case. Uh, I'd be pretty little as a heavyweight. But typically, when you're wrestling 197, the guys are like, I was in the wrestling room the other day watching the guys wrestle. The one guy was weighing 220 and he's going to cut down to 97 so yeah you know that's not odd to see guys weigh that heavy and go down especially at this level the big 10 level so yeah for sure all right yeah i mean that's awesome i give you a lot of credit for doing both because i you know i played a division three sport for a season and i was like you know this isn't for me too much yeah i was like i'm just gonna go into media <laughs> but um yeah and and dan just as far as your recruiting process. So you were committed to Fordham, correct? Yep. Yes, sir. And I'm sure that was such a tough decision when Coach Harbaugh called you, right? Yeah. I mean, it was <laughs> – but I, I decommitted um, before, way before Coach Harbaugh ever. You did? Like, okay. Yeah. Do you mind walking us through how that went? Yeah. So, um. You know, junior year, I got a lot of um, a lot of like FCS, um, a lot of FCS offers and looks, and mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, I I took the scholarship from Fordham. Um, my in in the summertime of my junior year, I committed to Fordham, and I just wanted to, you know, I just want I don't want to get too much into it, but I just yeah. wanted to, like basically like not screw myself and no i get take it. the scholarship because it's really really good academic school Absolutely, take the scholarship yeah. so I, I in my head i knew after my senior year like i'm gonna get uh, big time looks like uh, that was just that was just my um kind of a safety process. net yeah, exactly yeah okay yeah, so i, I went through my that. yeah so i went through my my senior year and you know all these like as I was playing, I was sending out film. My coach was sending out film, and I was starting to get some some looks. So, you know, I just decided, like, you know, Fordham. I don't want to go to Fordham, so I'm just gonna decommit and and see what happens, and just pray yeah. pray that pray that somebody takes a chance on me. Yeah, and that's and I I don't think anybody. Uh, I don't think anybody would fault you for your decision. Yeah. I mean, you know. We're, we can all be honest and look in the mirror. Any of us probably would have made that decision because, yeah. again, not to not to put even more pressure on you guys, but you guys already know this. You're playing football at the University of Michigan. This is your yeah. shot. You know, you can't – once you're there, you can absolutely go to the next level, you know. And yeah. that's not exactly a um, – a realistic thing to, to think in your head when you're playing football at Fordham, for example, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I don't think anyone could fault you for that. I, I definitely support your decision. And did coach Harbaugh 
see, because I go to the University of Alabama, and mm-hmm. uh, there's a buddy of mine, actually. His name's Dante, who is on the practice squad over there. And mm-hmm. he, he says that Saban does all the recruiting. Now, did Coach Harbaugh – recruit you himself or does he have guys kind of doing the thing doing the work for him as he's focusing on coaching he he has guys um help him out but he did he did a lot of the recruiting it was mainly him and the quarterbacks coach coach mcdaniels okay yeah yeah Yeah, that's awesome and just to go back to when you guys walked me through like a week you know again my buddy he's just on the practice squad and he we don't see the guy because he's just so busy, you know? So I could imagine what you guys are going through and especially doing two sports. Um, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I give you guys a lot of credit. That's awesome. But um, as far as, and my next question is uh, a little, a little bit off topic and a little funny to some people, but this is uh this podcast is also, we involve a lot of gambling on this show. Um, it's very Vegas oriented and uh I know you guys won't get too much into that, absolutely, and I wouldn't ask you to, but just as far as simple, you know, do you guys take note of the fact that Vegas does have you guys as the fourth best odds to win the Big Ten? Does that does that go into, like, um, kind of driving you guys and kind of motivating you guys, knowing that Ohio State, Wisconsin, and Penn State this year have better odds? Is that like a driving factor, or is that completely just ignored? No, it's for sure driving to be, you know, to be slept on a little bit. Absolutely. I, mean, I, was, I was slept on as a recruit my whole life, so, you know, I know how it feels, so it definitely, definitely drives us, drives us to work hard. Mm-hmm. And will, you know, will coaches ever come in and, you know, not – using betting terms, but will they ever come in and say, you know, no one believes in you, like, you know, and tell you that you're an underdog or I know you haven't played a game yet, but I'm saying as far as the big picture, the season, is it, do they make it aware to the players that you're the dog and to, you know, really strive to, you know, to overcome it? Or is that just completely ignored and you go about business as yourselves? I would say they would ignore it. Yeah, it's ignored for sure. They don't really – I'm not really worried about that stuff. At okay, all. yeah, yeah. I, I I get that. Um, I like Michigan this year. You know, they uh, you got a tough schedule. Honestly, I mean, a lot of tough road games and stuff. But you know, the Big Ten's packed this year. I'm looking at it right now. It's uh, it's packed. So, do you guys expect to redshirt or get some playing time? Maybe special teams? How? What? What? What's the outlook right now as far as the depth chart? I plan on redshirting. I think Me Dan too. does as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and what's plan on that? What is that? Uh, if you don't mind me asking, quick, what what's that process like at such a big school? I don't know. Like, if we're really sure yet. Yeah, yeah I think okay, it's all new, right? I think. Yeah, I think you could still play in um, four games if you redshirt, but okay. you can't play in over four games. I think that's the rule. Yeah. Okay. And then, yeah, maybe you guys could get a quarter in or something, you know, and like the, yeah. you know, the, listen, Rutgers is on the schedule. Mm-hmm. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I know you guys can't say anything, but yeah, yeah, that's uh, so that's good. I mean, yeah. And uh, just last question and you don't have to get too much into it because I know you guys are new guys and stuff, but um, is there, are there pressures of coming to, a school that's on the spotlight like Michigan and you're going to be on TV and everyone's talking about you in the media. And is there pressure when you're playing for a coach who let's face a lot of us consider to be on the hot seat is, does that take, does that, you know, strive you guys to play harder for him? What, what is that like? Cause I mean, as far as players now, I know you ignore the media and that's what you're supposed to do. But as high school kids, the last couple of years, it would be impossible to ignore the media attention on coach Harbaugh and being on the hot seat. So uh, what is that like? Is it, are you guys going to really, I don't know. Does that ever come up? Just walk me through that if you don't mind. Yeah. I don't know if that's extremely a factor or not. Uh, I think the statement that Harbaugh's on the hot seat uh, isn't, 
really true. Uh, you know, he's accomplished a lot as a coach at Michigan. Uh, Absolutely. You know, he doesn't have the national title that everyone thought he was going to have yet or anything like that. But, you know, he's had some very good seasons. Uh, you know, you can't put all the blame on him. Uh, you yeah, know, there's of course not. Many, how many games in his – time at Michigan where one play made a difference in the game. So uh, for for that statement to be say he's on the hot seat, I just – I don't really – I don't see how that would you – know. Yeah, and, and it's funny because I actually agree with you. I'm a, I'm a hardball guy, and a lot of times I'm watching ESPN or, you know, Fox Sports, whatever I'm watching, and they're talking about Coach Harbaugh and so in such a negative way. And I actually agree with you. I, I think the opposite. I think he's, you know – uh, he's done a lot. He's has a lot of good achievements at Michigan, and he's and you can't put that all him uh, on on him. So, yeah, I, I I absolutely do. So I'm guessing that from what your answer was, that's not the feeling in Ann Arbor. You know, the feeling no. isn't that he's on the hot seat at all. The feeling is that he's here to stay and that he's doing a good job. Yeah, I mean, he's doing whatever we we have to do to win. You know, yeah. so. Absolutely. And that's good to hear because, again, I'm not coming at Coach Harbaugh. I, I think he's doing a great job, and I actually disagree a lot when people do on the media, uh, the main media, say he's on the hot seat. I kind of disagree, but that's good to hear then. But, um, yeah. yeah, so upcoming uh, expectations for the season, just as a real wrap-up conclusion, what do you guys think? What are we, what are we going for here? Big Ten champs. Big Ten champs. I mean, that's all. That's the that's the highest. It's the highest we could go this year. So yeah, absolutely. That's the plan. Yes, sir. Yep. All right. So thanks for coming on, guys. Uh, I appreciate it. Really do. Um, and again, I know I know you guys are so busy with everything going on. You just got there for workouts. So thanks for taking the time. We all appreciate it. And good luck this season with everything. Thanks for having us, Nick. Appreciate it. All right, guys.